The time to pass sons has come. So don't miss this opportunity. So if you are new to this channel, kindly subscribe for more videos. And also, try, try to comment something. Okay. And also, share the video. So in this representation, in this representation, I'm going to answer few questions from section A and one question for a moment from section B. Okay. So the first one leads, what is the leading on the venia calipers? What is the leading on the venia wati calipers? So now on this part here, you need to know the formula. You need to know what? The formula. You need to know the formula. So the formula goes like this, okay? So the main scale, the main what? The main scale plus the venia scale multiplied by what? Accuracy is equal to final reading. So I'm saying main scale plus venia scale multiplied by accuracy is equal to what? Final reading. Okay, so now on this part here, since we are talking about, we are talking of uh, the venia calipers, you need to know the accuracy of the venia calipers in meters, let me say in, in, centi in millimeters and centimeters. You need to know the accuracy of the venia calipers in millimeters and also in centimeters. So I'll start with centimeters. So the accuracy of the venia, the venia calipers in centimeters, it is what? 0 0.01 centimeters. Okay. The accuracy of the venia calipers in centimeters, it is what? 0 0.01 centimeters. Then, the accuracy of the venia calipers, the accuracy of the venia calipers in millimeters, it is what? 0 0.1 millimeter or millimeters. 0 0.1 millimeters okay so now on this part here they have given us the main scale in millimeters which means we are going to use the accuracy of the venia calipers in millimeters okay so now how we read the venia calipers is like this so the scale on top here this one here it is called the what the main scale and then this scale here the small scale which is starting from 0 up to 10, it is called what? The venia scale. So now, how we take the reading on the main scale is like this. Okay. I hope you are going to understand on this part here. Nothing is complicated here. So on the main scale, we take the reading before the zero on the venia scale. So let me repeat on this part here. I'm saying, on the main scale, we take the reading before the zero on the venia scale. So on this part here, as you can see, if we take the reading before the zero on the venia scale, it is going to do what? 10 millimeters. It is going to do what? 10 millimeters. And also you need to see the, unit, the, the, the units that they have used here. So on the, on the main scale, they have used what? Millimeters. So I'm going to say 10 millimeters plus Okay, or oh, before I add, let me also take the, what, the readings from the venia scale. So the reading from the venia scale, you take the reading where the point on the main scale is colliding with the point on the venia scale. Or oh, where two points, the point from the main scale and the point from the venia scale are meeting. So in this case, as you can see clearly, see it clearly. You can see that two points are meeting at point four on the venia scale. So now, since here I have now uh, taken the venia scale reading, so I'm going to say main scale, it is what, 10 millimeters plus the venia scale, which is what, 4 multiplied by accuracy. So in this case here, they have given us the units in what in millimeters. So I'm going to use the venia, the accuracy of the venia carry pass in what in millimeters, which is what 0 0.1 millimeters. So if I multiply, I'm going to get my final reading to be what 10.4 millimeters. So the answer here is what A. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. So the next one is saying the velocity 
of a moving car is constant during part of a journey. So I want you to understand on this part here. They are saying the velocity of a moving car is constant. Is what? Constant. During the during part of a journey. So now, during the part of a journey, if the velocity is constant, the acceleration is going to be what? Zero. So the answer here is going to be what? D. Zero all the time. Because for you to have the acceleration, the velocity need to change as well. And also the time need to do a thing to change. So the next one is saying a rectangular the, the, the rectangular block of wood has the dimensions shown and a mass of 24.0 grams. Then the first question is saying, then the question is saying, what is the density of the wood? What is the density of the wood? So density is equal to a t mass over volume. So in this case here, we only have mass. We don't have what? Volume. So there is a need to find volume here. So volume is equal to length multiplied by breadth multiplied by what? Height. So in this case here, the length it is what? 8 centimeters. Then the breadth here it is what? 4 centimeters multiplied by the height, which is what? 1.0 centimeters. Then if I compute, I'm going to get what? 32 centimeters cube, since this one is the volume, so it's centimeters what? Cube. So now let's try now to find density. So density is equal to what? Mass, which is what? 24 grams or 24.0 grams over volume, which is what? 32. 32 what? 32.0 grams or 32, let me say 32 point, 32.0 centimeters cube. Okay. So from there now, when I compute or when I divide, I'm going to get what? 0 0.75 grams per centimeter cube, which is what? A. Okay. The answer is what? A. The next one, it is coming from, from where? From light. Okay. It is coming from light. So it is saying the diagram shows a ray of light or the ray of light passing into a same circular block of plastic. So the diagram shows a ray of light passing into a semicircular block of plastic. So now on this part here, we are having the ray coming from where? From, from air, entering the what? The plastic. So the plastic is going to be considered to be high dense medium. Then air is going to be considered to be what? Less dense medium. Okay. I hope you have understood on this part here. So now, uh, this line which is in a dotted or the dotted line is called the what? The normal line. The dotted line is called the what? The normal line. Now, as you can see here, the ray is coming from where? It is coming from air. So now, when the ray is coming from less dense medium, which is the air, after passing through the normal, it bends toward the what? The normal. Okay. Now, on this part here, the angle of incidence is formed between the incident ray and the normal. So in this case here, our angle of incidence is what? 40 degrees, not 50. 40 degrees. And also, the angle of refraction is formed between the normal and the diffracted ray. So in this case here, we are having what? 25. 20 what? 25. Okay. So we are calculating the what? The question is saying, what is the diffractive index of the plastic? So the, the refractive index, it is denoted by small letter n. So refractive index is equal to what? Sine angle of incidence over sine angle of refraction. So in this case here, the angle of incidence is what? 40. Then the angle of refraction is what? 25. So if I do the computation here, I'm going to find that the answer is going to be what? 1.5. So the answer here is what? A. Okay. So the next one is saying, radio waves radio waves visible right them visible right and x rays are all components of the electromagnetic spectrum what is the order of increase with wave length what is the order of increase wave length okay so i'm going to give you the mnemonic the mnemonic goes like this my roast means my roast means is very unusual x must what t gift 
My roast means is very unusual. X must what gift. Where R for roast is going to represent what radio wave. Then M microwave. Is which is I infrared. V very visible right. Unusual ultraviolet. X mass X ray. Gift gamma ray or Y ray. So now what really happens here is like this, eh? If you move. Or if you are coming from gamma ray, going to where? Going to where? To the radio wave or radio waves. The wavelength increases. The wavelength increases. So now, on this part E, on this part E, I'm saying if you move from gamma rays or Y rays, going to the radio wave, the wavelength increases, but if you move from the radio wave going to the gamma ray, the frequency increases. Okay, so I'm going to say the shorter wavelength E8 is going to be what? X rays. X rays. Followed by what? Visible light. Then the last one with the highest wavelength is the radio what? waves. So the answer here is going to be what? D. The answer here is going to be what? D. Okay. So the next one is saying the diagram shows a cross section through a wave, through a what? A wave. We have the displacement. Okay. We have the what? The displacement of a, of a wave. Then the question is saying what are the amplitude? What are the amplitude and the wavelength? Of the wave. So the wavelength it is Q. The wavelength it is what? T? Q. Then the amplitude it is S. The amplitude it is what? T? S. So the answer here it is going to be what? T? D. Then the next one. The next one is saying an electric motor, an electric motor lifts a mass of uh, 100 kgs through a vertical distance of 20 meters. Gravitational field strength is 10 newtons per kg. How much work is done by the motor to lift the mass? So on this, on this part E, work is done against the gravity. So I'm going to say work is equal to force multiplied by distance. Now this distance here, it is in form of what? Height. So work is equal to force multiplied by height. Now since we know that force is equal to when force is done against the gravity, the force is going to be what? Force is equal to mg, where g is going to be what? The gravity, the gravitational what? Field strength. So our final formula that we are going to use is what? Work is equal to mg multiplied by height. So in this case here we have uh, the mass to be 100 kgs multiplied by the gravity which is 10 newton per kg multiplied by height which is what? 20 meters. Then the answer is going to be what? If I compute here, the answer is going to be what? 20,000 joules. So remember, work is measured in joules. So 20,000 what? Joules. Okay. The next one. The next one is saying um, a full charged, a full what? A full charged 12 volts battery surprise, surprise a what? A current of 3.0 amps for um, 30 hours. What is the total energy? What is the what? The total energy that the battery surprise. So energy is equal to what? Power multiplied by what? Power multiplied by time. Power multiplied by what? Time. So now on this part here, since I know that power is equal to voltage multiplied by current, so I'm going to say energy is equal to voltage multiplied by current multiplied by time. Voltage multiplied by current multiplied by what? Time. So in this case here, our voltage it is what? 12 volts. Then our current it is 3. Multiplied by the time which is what? 30. Multiply by what? 30 hours. Okay. Multiply by what? 30 hours. Now, on this part here, I was saying, when you are calculating the energy, when you are calculating the energy, power should be in kilowatts. Now, 
here we are not calculating the what the cost of electricity. We are not calculating the what the cost of electricity. So which means we are just going to take it directly like that. So here the answer is going to what team 1008 joules, which is what B. Then the next one is saying the diagram represents a neutral atom of an isotope of beryllium. So we have X. X is representing the, what, the electrons. Then Y is representing the, what, the neutrons because the nucleus is made up of what? The protons and the, the, nu the neutrons. Okay. So they have labeled the protons, which means the part which is remaining there is what? Neutrons. So the answer here is going to be A. Okay. So the next one is saying what is not given out from unstable nucleus during the radioactive decay? So we have three types of um, radiations. The first one is the alpha particle. The next one is the beta particle. Then the last one is the, the gamma particle. So which means the answer here is going to be the ultra radiation. Then the last one, which is coming from moment. So moment is going to come in your paper, whether you like it or not. You're going to tell me. So it is high time you knew it. It is high time you knew it. So figure 6.1 shows a force of uh, 200 newtons applied at the end of um, a wrench to tighten a boat. The boat acts as a, a pivot. Okay, so figure 6.1 shows a force of uh, 200 newtons upright at the end of a wrench to tighten a boat. The boat acts as a, a pivot. So the boat here acts as what? The pivot. So the distance from the pivot to where 200 newtons is acting, it is what? 850 millimeters. Now, when you are dealing with moment or let me just say distance always distance always should be should be near in meters distance always should be in meters so there is a need to convert this one here okay so the first question which is question a is saying calculate the moment of the 20 let me say 200 newtons force about the center of the board give your answer in standard d notation and state the what the units give your answer in standard what notation and give your what the units so on this part here i'm going to say moment is equal to force multiplied by what distance moment is equal to what force multiplied by distance so in this case here force we have which is what 200 newtons what about the what about the distance the distance is what? 850 millimeters. So the first thing here, let's try to convert 150 millimeters into meters. Let me say into centimeters. So we all know that one centimeter is equal to 10 millimeters. So I uploaded the video, or now you are going to. Okay, I uploaded the video. Or now to convert different units in physics or science paper one. So one centimeter is equal to what? 10 millimeters. So if you want to convert uh, one, let me say 850 millimeters into centimeters, you're going to divide it by what? 10. Then the answer is going to be 85 centimeters. And also 85 centimeters, you need to convert it into now meters. So I'm going to say one meter is equal to 100 centimeters. So if I do the computation here, I'm going to find that the answer is going to be what? 0 0.85 meters. 0 0.85 meters. So my moment is equal to force, which is 200 newtons, multiplied by the distance, which is what? 0 0.85 meters. So if I compute here, my answer is going to give me, is going to be what? Um, 170, 170 what, newton meter. Now the question was saying we need to give the answer in standard what notation. Now if they say in standard notation, which means you are going to multiply this number or you're going to express this number with a 10 to the power something. With a 10 to the power t something. So I'm going to express it like this. I'm going to say um 
1.7 multiplied by 10 to the power 2. 10 to the power t, 2 newton meter or meters. So I'm saying, how to express this one is like this, okay? So you, you count the decimal places from uh, 0 going to the left side. So how many decimal places do we have here? We want to reach at the O number, which is what? 7. So I'm going to count 1, 2. So I'm having two decimal places, which means I'm going to say 1.7 multiplied by 10 to the power t, 2 newton meter. Now, on this part here, try by saying 1.7 multiplied by 10 to the power 2. You are going to get what? 170 newton meter, which means the answer is correct. Okay. The last one, which is B. A different lynch has a weight of um, 5 newtons. A small electric motor, a small electric motor produces a power of 2 watts to lift this lynch. Calculate the height through which the motor lifts this lynch in 1.5 seconds. So we are calculating the what? The height. So I'm going to say power. Power is equal to change in energy over time. So in this case here, we are looking for we are looking for what change in energy. Okay, we are looking for a T change in energy. Once we find the change in energy, that one is going to help us to find now the height. Okay, so the power here we have um, two watts. So two watts is equal to change in energy we don't have divided by time, which is uh, 1.5 seconds or sec. So if I cross multiply here, I'm going to find that the change in energy or work is going to be what T? Three joules. Three what? Three joules. Okay. So now, work is equal to force multiplied by distance. Force multiplied by distance. Now, in this case, they are looking for height. So, I'm going to change distance. I'm going to put what? Height. Okay. So, work we have, which is what? Three joules is equal to the force. They have given us the force, which is what? Five newtons. Then the height we don't have. Then the height we don't have. So here I'm going to say, since I'm looking for the height, I'm going to divide by what? 5 newtons. Even here by what? 5 newtons. Then the height is going to be 0 0.60 meters. The answer is going to be what? 0 0.60 meters. So that was the last one. Thanks for watching.